So that's what we do on the yard. We uh we dropping new hotness. One dot two five. Okay. Yes. This is my face. Maybe you have seen it. Maybe you haven't. Moving on. So yes, Lumberyard 1.25 has just dropped. Real quick, if you guys have not checked out the video put together by John Diaz and the team explaining the highlights and the features of the new version, definitely check that out. But I was pleasantly surprised uh, to find out new stuff uh, inside the new version. Uh, one of those things being white box, which is what our video is going to be about today. So the white box component is a tool where you are allowed to basically sketch out 3D meshes. So you basically add it as a component to an entity, uh, select a primitive shape as a base, and then you go into edit mode and start sculpting or, or pulling vertices and faces as you see fit to bring about your vision for the mesh. And this is honestly great. This will allow well, me in particular to be able to create different meshes for our tutorials and then be able to uh, buy, you know, package up the assets and let you guys play with them as well when you're you know when you're following along so this is really great so if we head into the editor you can see if I hit an entity and go to add component type in white box and we have that all right so there's currently five different um, shapes that we can use we have a uh, cube tetrahedron iconosahedron uh, sphere cylinder and an option for custom asset, which is basically a previous um, white box asset that you may have uh, created and saved out, and that you can basically reload back in to continue to edit. It has to have the dot uh, b the dot bm uh, extension. So each white box component has a few settings. Of course, we have the shape that we just went over. Um, we can save it as an asset, uh, which would give it the I believe give it the dot WBM uh, extension for later use we can add a tint uh, use a texture and yeah, of course have it if it's visible or not and then we have the edit edit mode and then we have the export um, so you can use it inside of your DCT tool to further either work on the asset or as a reference to make a more detailed mesh one of the cool things is this uh, save as asset so the WBM functions like a instance. So if we were to save this as an asset and then, then reloaded it, should I say, reloaded it back in and then copied it and made more edits to it, it would edit each copy of the entity that matches that WBM instance um, at the same time. And you can see that here as an example from the Lumbyard team here. So if we take this cube and go to edit mode, there are several uh, buttons and configurations that we can uh, do and combine to get the desired effect. So as you can see, if I hover around the edge of the face, it highlights. Now it's really easy and intuitive because all we have to do is take our left mouse button, click and pull. See that we just click and pull. Really, really easy. The next one is actually moving an edge. So if I take the edge, and move that up or down, you can see that it affects the edge now. Right, like I said, really intuitive. If we wanted to scale, we will click a face and then take an edge and then just scale it that way. This also works if you take an edge and scale it that way as well. Now, if you want it more like a non-uniform scale, you would still click on, say, an edge, but then you will hold Alt, click on a vertice, and move that one by itself. So the other one is not, it's independent of the other vertice that's connected to it. Now I'm gonna undo here because this has gotten a little wild. <laughs> now, so extrude. So if we wanted to extrude this, we will click on the face, we'll hold Control, and then it'll extrude. And as you can see, we have our uh, line here so if I wanted to extrude here now we've created basically a little mini stair I wanted to pull this out pull this up pull this out pull this up see it's really cool really like I said really intuitive I know I keep using that word 
and the same works for an edge. So if I wanted to extrude an edge, I can take this guy over here, hold control and pull. See that? Now if I wanted to do that, just let go and connect. Now we have a little platform. <laughs> Another cool one is being able to extrude uh, via scale. So if I was to take this guy here, take that there, I'm gonna hold control. I'm gonna pull this outward. And I'm gonna extrude it forward. Hold control, pull it in, extrude forward. Push it out, extrude forward. Push it out, extrude forward. And you know, you can just keep going. Just, you can just keep going with it. And you can even push it inward. Make it a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. Pull out. Look at it, it's, it's, it's very fast. And you, if you get used to the controls, you can really make something in really quick iteration times. We can also hide edges. So if I was to click on this guy here and hit H, it hides it. Now that's a full polygon now. So if I wanted to, I can hide this, hide this, hide this, hide this, and hide this. Now I have this guy and I can just move it upward. Or if I wanted to extrude it, hold control and extrude it. Really cool. On the flip side, you can actually unhide edges. So if you hold control and shift, you see all the edges on the mesh, even the ones that we hid. Uh, so they're not completely gone. Now take note that when you unhide an edge, you have to make sure that it is connected to another vertice to make that line. Otherwise, if I was to click this guy here, you see it's highlighted, but when I let go of shift and control, it doesn't show up. But if I click, say this guy and this guy, it's there. So just like anything with uh, your DCC tool, a line is drawn when you connect, connect one or more vertices, at least two. So the same rule applies here. So I wanted to add all these guys back. I could. And now we have our uh, segregated faces again. And the same thing works for a vertex. So if I wanted to click on the vertex, I can hit H. Hide that and no longer have that vertex. This whole mesh right here, this whole face right here is a face. So if I click on that and pull out, well, sorry, let me go ahead and hold control and extrude out. Now we have that as a whole face. And as always, if we go ahead and click on hold control shift, click on these two guys here. Sorry, click on these two guys here. Now the line is back. So yeah, that's the white box tool. Very nice addition to the engine. We're looking forward to playing with it. I would like to see something like a little bit more uh, put into like the texture uh, setting. Cause you know, for like game jams and things of that nature, you might want to actually use the white box as permanent meshes in the game. So being able to add a texture or something to that effect, will be really nice. But as always, if you guys want to follow me in my social media, those things are in the description down below. Um, I do play games on my other channel. And of course I have my game development stuff on a different channel. So if you guys want to support the channel, definitely go give those channels a follow. But other than that, hope you guys are prospering in your projects. Hope you guys are making headway and things of that nature. And until next time, keep developing.